She is a special security inspector who, despite her average looks, possesses a sense of smell beyond the ordinary. She is seen stopping a young man in white, taking his bag and knowing that it contains contraband without even looking at it. Not only that she can also smell the negative emotions in other people's hearts, such as malice. This day, at the security checkpoint, she stares at another man in a suit. Tina smells lewdness and malice on him, but she searches the man's bag and finds no contraband, so she asks the man to pull out his cell phone. Tina picks up the phone and sniffs it carefully, and sure enough, there's a memory card hidden in the case. The man grabbed it and tried to swallow the stolen goods, but her colleague hurriedly held him down and pulled the stolen goods out of his mouth. Because of her looks Tina has long been discriminated against and bullied. She had a boyfriend who lived in her house but didn't like her and would even call people intimate nicknames in front of her. Tina doesn't care. She just wants someone to live in her house and not seem so cold. Tina prefers the jungle to the city and the company of the animals that appear every now and then. She thought she'd be alone for the rest of her life. Until the day a man came through the security checkpoint, who surprisingly had a similar look to Tina. This man has a fierce look on his face, and Tina always feels that there is something wrong with him. So she has her co-workers search the man. As a result, the co-worker found out that this man actually has a woman's body, which is too strange. But what's even stranger is that the man has a scar on his tailbone. And this scar Tina also has. The man says his name is Wolf and that he has something to say to Tina alone, and tells Tina the hotel where he is staying. The next day Tina can't help but go to find him. She finds Wolf is hiding in the woods next to her catching bugs on the trees to eat. Obviously disgusting, but Tina is inexplicably attracted to it. Wolf tells Tina, we are not human at all, but a mountain monster in the Nordic mythology. Born androgynous, so the chromosome defect is just a human arranged in her body's locks and handcuffs. So he tells Tina not to care about what the outside world says, and Tina is gradually attracted to Wolf in this way. And when she learns that Wolf does not have a permanent residence, she takes him home and vacates a room for him. Tina's boyfriend is of course not happy to have another man in the house, and he tells Tina to get rid of Wolf, forgetting that as a boyfriend himself. He was also taken in by Tina, so Tina outbreak of the beast of the latent body. She did not want to endure their hard work all their lives, buy a house and get married, bear to be an ordinary person, has been restrained himself. The result in the end, since not even human, Tina threw the boyfriend's television set out of the house. <laughs> Tina has been living with Wolf ever since, and Tina has become less lonely. They were both afraid of thunder and would curl up together under the table and shiver during thunderstorms. When the sky clears up, they roam the jungle together and go crazy in the lake, as if Tina should belong to such a free life. Tina was just told that mountain monsters actually used to have a tail, and it was this tail that allowed them to smell emotions. What Wolf said made Tina feel especially happy, and for the first time in her life, Tina realized that her appearance was not a defect. Gradually, the two have feelings for each other. Tina wants to live in seclusion with him in the mountains. Wolf also readily agreed. But one day, Tina finds the refrigerator in her house taped up and seems to have something hidden inside. Tina opens it and pulls out a box, which is actually a baby, box with his eyes closed. It looked strange. Tina was shocked. She carefully touched the baby's skin. His skin was like clay very soft and poked holes with a little pressure. Tina panicked and decided to go to Wolf to ask for clarification. But at that moment Wolf killed a human. When Tina arrives at the scene, she smells Wolf's scent and follows it into the jungle, where she finds Wolf, who says that humans hunted and killed mountain monsters many years ago, that his parents died in the massacre, and that young mountain monsters like him were thrown into a psychiatric hospital, and that he is now taking revenge on the humans. The baby in the refrigerator is the unfertilized embryo of the mountain monster. They have soft skin and can pinch their faces at will. They can only eat and sleep. They have no feelings and they won't live long. Tina is overwhelmed with shock. She lets out a beastly hiss, with anger in her eyes. Wolf is scared back, but he doesn't have the slightest bit of remorse. The next day, Tina saw an ambulance parked in front of her neighbor's house. She went in to see what was going on, and when she entered, she found that it was no longer the cute baby lying in the crib, but the embryo of the mountain monster after pinching his face. Tina knew that it was definitely Wolf's doing. She rushes to Wolf's room, but Wolf is long gone, leaving only a note. Tina is told to find him on the ship and leave the human city together. On the third day, Tina gets on the ship and finds Wolf, but not to go with him, because she couldn't agree with Wolf's cruel behavior. Tina grabbed Wolf with two policemen, 
but who knew Wolf violently broke free and then jumped from the ship. Looking at the churning sea water, Tina sheds tears and everything seems like a dream. She returned home and watched her neighbors go away, then went to an old cemetery full of corpses of massacred mountain monsters. Tina sat down in the middle of the tombstones, and for the first time, she looked like a child who knew what was wrong, and from then on she went back to that lonely state, already unaccepted by humans, and now having abandoned her only mountain monster companion, she has become even more decrepit than before. Until the day she sees a box on her doorstep containing a baby, her child with Wolf. Who knows Tina won't recognize her life, much less pursue it, but at least he wants to make sure Tina isn't alone. So he gives her the baby and lets her live happily ever after in the city. 